I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, would you call the roll, please? Okay. Commissioner Rivers. Here. Commissioner Flowers. Here. Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Way. Here. Last week I had a, uh, I was at a meeting and Beverly Slough, who's the chairman of the school board, happened to be there too. And the meeting was concerning uh, prayer. And I asked Beverly, I said, do you have prayers at the beginning of your school board meeting? She said, we always do. And I said, how do you work that? She says, we rotate. The school board members actually say the prayers. So um, <clears throat> I checked also with the county commission. The county commission always have, has an invocation. Uh, the county commission does it a little differently. They call in different pastors to come in and give the invocation. But there's one thing I want to suggest to our secretary is next time instead of putting prayer on the agenda, which I ask you to do, let's change it to invocation. Um, so could we all please bow in prayer. Dear Lord, we ask you to be present here today and to guide us as we deliberate the issues before us. We pray especially for the safety of those who navigate our waterways. Be especially with and protect those law enforcement officers who in turn protect us. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. All right, um, adoption and approval of the agenda. There's one item I'd like to add to the agenda, and that is the approval of the Florida Association of Special Districts membership. Uh, I have a letter here, and I uh, think our secretary sent this around to everybody. Um, we have been a member for several years. It was the advice, in fact, of called blow a fine that we go ahead and join this organization that, that could help us. So um, I'd just like to uh, ask uh, that we put that on the agenda as item D under new business. Okay, it, is there a motion to approve the agenda with that addition? I move to approve with that addition. I'll second it. Is there a second? I second it. Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Motion passes. Okay, we're down to uh, public comment. And uh, do you have the time down there? Yes. Keep it. Okay, yeah, I do. All right, Mr. Slavin. Good afternoon. Ed Slavin, box 3084, edslavin.com. Um, let me suggest at the outset that it would be in order for the uh, uh, commission to elect a chair. Barry Mark Benjamin has resigned for a very good cause. And under Robert's rules, Mr. Vice Chair, you're not the chair. The commissioners need to vote. Um, Taylor Engineering, at your last meeting, you correctly voted to um, reject an arbitration clause and the vice president of Taylor Engineering left the room. He left in such a hurry, he knocked my cell phone and cord on the floor. Fortunately, nothing was broken. I notice he's not here. Um, is that a default procedurally? Maybe learned counsel could advise us. And um, furthermore, um, I'm very concerned, as I told you at the end of the last meeting, that while you took out the arbitration clause, which is wise, government should never agree to arbitrate with anyone, um, there's still a mediation clause, and it mysteriously requires that the venue for any mediation conference with the mediator be in Taylor Engineering's offices. I would hope in the light of wisdom and experience that y'all would take that out and tell them, no, we're not interested in mediating in your office or any kind of manipulation like that. Um, on the Florida Association of Special Districts, I'll address it when, when it's on the agenda, but um, I don't see the benefit to it. I've recently been researching the Florida Association uh, for Mosquito Control, 
and they and uh, the Special Districts Association have the same council, the same lobbyists with Lewis Longman and Walker. And I don't know that the Florida Association of Special Districts does anything for us. I'd like to hear that case made, and maybe somebody could come here from them. Um, the seven generation test, calling your attention again to the article that I wrote in the record last year about the seven generation test. Everything that y'all consider here, you need to consider what is the effect going to be on folks living in St. Augustine seven generations from now. Particularly when we look at the West Coast, when we look at the uh, vast fires, there is global, uh, there is global climate change. Let's say it. And let's plan for it. And this district has never been very good at planning. By the way, um, does the district have a capital improvement plan? Because I see a budget, but I don't see a CIP. Uh, and I was just speaking to the mayor of St. Augustine Beach um, the other weekend, and she said, what's a CIP? And it shows. You don't have a CIP. You've got $2 million in the bank, and you don't have a CIP. Nancy Shaver, when she was mayor for 1,550 days, she actually introduced modern techniques and technology to the city of St. Augustine, including the CIP, which now is working wonderfully in the city of St. Augustine. So you need to plan your spending. Also, um, why haven't any of y'all posted bonds as required by the statute? I, I think that needs to change. Um, and when you consider the budget, I certainly hope that you have some riders in it saying that no money will be spent outside the district boundaries. Now, in the past, this district has spent money on dumping concrete in the ocean off of Flagler County. It's not within the territorial limits of the district. And learned counsel needs to advise you on that, or else you need to get a state attorney general's opinion, because I don't think, based upon the existing AG's opinion, that it's legal for this district to spend money on, on things like a concrete dumping for a s alleged artificial reef. Um, we've had 20 years of audit exceptions, at least, about having the same person write the checks. You know the deal, and your auditor apparently is here and will be making a presentation. You need a staff. This commission voted in the past not to have a staff. Instead, you have contractors, supervising contractors. You have an attorney who didn't have a contract for 10 years. Um, and, and you've got liability on the part of people who did work for the district, uh, an engineering firm and a construction firm for some of the work uh, down south. And the attorney has taken 15 years to do what? He, uh, 15, seems like 15 years, 15 months. Still haven't gotten a lawsuit pending. Still haven't gotten any coherent reports on that. Um, but this just illustrates why St. John's County very badly needs a county charter with an ombudsman, with an inspector general, with accountability for every single governmental organization in St. John's County. Because when you add it all up, uh, the schools and the BCC and the cities um, and the special taxing districts, um, it's over a billion dollars. And you know what my mother's favorite comedian, the late Everett McKinley Dirksen, once said? Senator Dirksen, a billion dollars here, a billion dollars there, and pretty soon you're talking about real money. When we get to the budget, we need to have our questions answered, and we need more respect. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public that wants to speak? <clears throat> All right, we're down to uh, government representatives. Mr. Piggott. Jim Piggott, uh, City of St. Augustine. I just have uh, three quick items for you, actually two and a half. Uh, first of all, I sent an email out to everyone today. Hopefully you got it uh, regarding a, a memo from our city attorney just answering what I presumed to be the question from the last meeting about uh, ordinances versus resolutions. Um, and she, she attached uh, to that an opinion uh, from 2008, I think it was, from this year's board. And I sent it to uh, your attorney as well. Um, last, and the second thing is, last night, our city commission, this is just FYI, voted to start Nights of Lights a week earlier than normal. So instead of on the 21st, which would be normal, it's going to be the 14th. Uh, there's not going to be any big light-up ceremony in the city this year. And due to the COVID restrictions, we're just going to have the lights on early afternoon and, and go right into the Nights of Lights. Uh, and then the half thing is uh, I know um, 
call blows here. Uh, we fared pretty well in the uh, find uh, review of our application to dredge salt run from this year's application, and I'll let Carl talk the rest. Any questions? Didn't they just dredge salt run? We did, yes, ma'am. But if you remember, we get the grants and we can accumulate them for three years, yes, and sir. then we're going to because we get more bang for the buck with the, with the dredge. So this was the first year. Uh, we'll again apply next January, February. Apply January, February the following year, and then we will dredge as soon as that application with six hundred thousand dollars instead of two hundred thousand dollars. Who does the inspections on the salt run dredging? Uh, that was Taylor Engineering. We would get the uh, surveys, and they would uh, verify the surveys at the appropriate. Taylor uh, Engineering does the inspections, and they're in, they're in charge of all that dredging too. Yeah, we have a continuing service contract with them. They don't do the dredging. Um, we have another company that does the dredging. That continuous service contract gets reviewed, I guess, every couple years. And yeah, I think and it's a three-year three-year contract. So they're in, they're responsible when we give you money to do dredging and salt run. The people who inspect that work are basically Taylor Engineering's engineers. Mm -hmm. okay. Carl, Mr. Blow. Hello, Commissioners. It's Carl Blow, Florida Inland Navigation District. Um, just wanted to touch base with you, as Mr. Pickett alluded to, uh, just to give you an update on the um, fine grants that uh, um, you were involved in, which was the one for Salt Run. Uh, it's one of those rare ones where the local match is only 25% instead of 50%. Uh, but anyway, city staff uh, did a pretty good job because out of um, 54 grant applications totaling $18,991,893, um, the salt run dredging scored number one. So we have our final tax hearing uh, on uh, the 23rd of this month, which I think is next Wednesday, and uh, we'll approve our final budget, which would um, basically um, – means this this project is going to be funded um the um, um the budget for this grant program is 13 million dollars so the way those 54 projects work is based on the highest score they're they're ranked and um so when we run out of 13 million dollars anything below that doesn't get funded so anyway um in addition to that, um, the St. Johns County, I think, yeah, they're here. Um, they also submitted two grant uh, applications, one of them being the uh, dredging of the Falano boat ramp basin, and um, that scored pretty high. And then another one, which is outside your district, is um, a boat ramp, a uh, new boat ramp on the up in Palm Valley at the Palm Valley Bridge, and that one scored pretty high. So um, I think... Uh, Commissioner Flowers, you were asking about how um, why there might why there's multiple grants for Salt Run is because um, what I the way I work with the city and the county on this is is um, you know obviously the county has needs and so um, uh, they basically at in, in this year we we prioritized um, um, uh, these projects and and Volano is very important you know, to keep that boat ramp functioning. And um, also Palm Valley is very important to the county. And so anyway, that's, you know, those got fun. Those were um, submitted. In other words, I negotiate this with the county and the city as to how we're going to approach uh, our tax, for lack of a better word, to um, try to get the, the grant funding. Um, the way the, 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 the grant funding works is there's a formula where uh, for each of the 12 counties in the fine district that there's only a maximum amount, even if, if all our projects scored, you know, like one, two, and three, but they amounted to more than um, $699,265, the maximum money that can come to 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 St. John's County this year from this fine program is at 699. So it's it's sort of a, a balancing act and 
that's that's why Mr. Pickett uh, on Salt Run we we uh, basically you know go multi-year to accumulate enough money to to have a uh, a viable project in there. So that that's if that makes any sense, that's the way it works. Um, other than that, um, just want to remind the board that uh, Fine has uh, uh, two additional grant programs, uh, and that this board's I think been involved in in the past with the city. Uh, it's the derelict boat removal program, and we allocate up to thirty thousand dollars per county for derelict boat removal, and that that program is not tied to a certain date deadline so uh, I, I, I guess uh, Sergeant Underwood might you know can address where we are on derelict boats but if you've got some derelict boats I just remind you that that source of funding is available uh, the FWC had uh, funding available for derelict boats but it due to the COVID-19 severe in, negative impact on the state's budget um, that funding got eliminated. So right now we're back to basically uh, fine funding and um, whatever you guys are willing to kick in for, uh, excuse me, derelict boat removal. Uh, there's another program we have available, which um, all the other counties in, in the fine district are very active in. I think we've only ever, for St. John's County, maybe had one occurrence, but um, it's the waterway cleanup program, and it's uh, the the limit is ten thousand dollars per county, and the way that program works is uh, fine will pay for certain things in a waterway cleanup, and usually the way it works is uh, a uh, like the marine industries or uh, lagoon keepers some one of these organizations these NGOs will be the sponsor of a cleanup and uh, basically it'll be volunteers to go out and actually clean up you know pick up trash in the waterway and um, what fine will pay through their grant is like the cost of gloves um, garbage bags, um, T-shirts. One thing everybody does is they, they usually make up a bunch of T-shirts for the volunteers. It's sort of an incentive for people, the volunteers. So anyway, I'll keep, just want to remind you that that, that is available. Um, other than that, uh, just, you probably are probably aware of this, but um, the United States Army Corps of Engineers is about to start their Volano Beach Renourishment Project. Um, the notice to proceed has been issued. I think the contractor is in the process of motivate or uh, uh, mobilizing, and um, so the good news is you'll see that uh, a rather large dredge arrive here shortly, and they'll be working there uh, in the inlet channel and then in the flood shoal area. And the current plan is to put 1.3 million cubic yards of sand on Bolano Beach. Um, as far north as uh, the Serenata Beach condos, which should be, you know, really helpful for that beach. Um, so other than that, I think that's all I have. Did you, you say have any um, questions? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Blow. Uh, they'll be uh, renourishing the Serenata Beach. Well, standard? what it is 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 that uh, it starts. They're going to renourish uh, a mile up to the high so tide line. Correct. Excuse up me. Up to the high tide line. Well, they, um, yeah, it's from the mean high water. Uh, what they have to do, and they've done this, is, is get easements from those property owners for, for placing that material, that sand. That means it's public then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, but, in yeah, other words, so Serenata right has now. given an yeah. easement to their private sand dunes to whom? The county or? Well, they give it to the Corps. And and the thing is, is I'll assure you, the federal government will not spend. Money yeah, last time the Corps on, was here, they said they were stopping short of those private sand dunes. So I'm I'm com I'm confused. Well, they're not building. They're not. This is mean high water. So they're just going up to the mean that, high water line. Right. Right. Okay. So they're not but, nourishing dunes. Yeah, right. But the thing is, to see the the what happens is the reason for the easements is they actually move the mean high water. So. The, what they're doing is they're getting when they create this new beach, 
they want to make sure it's a public beach because it's got, you know, Because right, there's no public and... access in front of Serenata, as you know. Well, so it only goes to Serenata. Right, but I mean, anywhere, well, you can't get to the beach in front of Serenata from anywhere unless you are in a heck of a well, What's condition. interesting about that, uh, Commissioner, is there's actually is, it was never developed, but on both the north and south end of Serenata Beach, there Interesting, is isn't it? State, well, I think but part the public of it, can't use those two public accesses never, that you're talking about. They were never developed, and right. I think well, partly can't get because to them, of can uh, parking issues. But uh, well, when can but we any, talk about opening up those two public accesses? Since I guess the county's getting ready to use our sales and our bed tax to do so. Yeah, well, I'll let you take that up with the county. Oh, so you don't uh, have anything to do with that? No, I don't okay. have anything to do with that. Okay, no, just check. Yeah, I was just letting you know what I know that that they're going to crank up that project and. And, and um, I, I, I rest assured, uh, the core, um, uh, they do not put um, federal dollars into something unless there's uh, some. Oh, I know that. But those, so we're going to have to have, in order, of, okay, so they're just going up to the high water mark is what you're saying. Yeah, and what, the reason for the easements is they're, they're, you know, like the high water mark may be up at, you know, somebody's like below their foundation. So they're building beach out. So the but why do you is, think those public accesses are not available for the public to use? I have I, I, at Serenata Beach. Yeah. Well, they they, um, they it was approved based on having those public accesses open to the public. No, no, and, no. The project oh, yes, so, wasn't approved based on. That's that. my understanding no, from the no, county no. that it was approved because of those two accesses, it, and it was, then all of a sudden, and they were supposed to be developed, and then development went away, and it just became private again, like the rest of the beach. Um, I yeah. sh probably should not. What what it is is that the the core does a study of existing public access and existing parking. So um, if if there's if if it may be deeded, but if I wonder it's if not the core used, knows that the public can't use those two accesses. That's it. Maybe that's the problem. They see that we have public access, but realize the public well, can't use I, them. Well, I can assure you. The, the the more public access there is, the higher percentage of yeah. federal dollars. Like for instance, here in, in San Augustine Beach, the federal participation is like eighty five. I mean, or above eighty five percent. This project is much lower. It's twenty two percent, something like that. So the balance of the money is being made up with bed tax and other sources of. You right. Know. See, I'm, I earn a lot. Of, I pay about ten grand in bed tax every year, but I can't use that beach, and neither can the people who pay, to pay me the bed tax. Well, that's, and as a matter of fact, bed tax is only supposed to be spent on something you are actually advertising towards tourism. Yeah. And that, you know that's, that's not open to the public, so it can't have any tourism. But I'll let you off the hook on that. Maybe. Yeah, that, that's well. way above my pay grade as far as uh, how the. T Yesterday, I got in works. the mail a card from the Army Corps of Engineers. Our Army Corps of Engineers, and um, its title is U.S. Army Corps Volano Beach Restoration Project begins September 2020. Beginning in September, pipe will be present on Volano Beach from the inlet to the project area. Construction of the dune and beach berm is scheduled to begin in October and is projected to be complete in early 2021, weather permitting. The equipment will operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <clears throat> the Surfside Park parking lot and pedestrian beach access point will be closed. And on-beach driving, horseback riding, and commercial fishing will be restricted from Volano Beach to Serenata Beach Ocean Villas for the duration of the project. <clears throat> the beach will remain open outside the active work areas with public access provided over the dredging pipes. So that might answer some questions. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, any other questions? Well, Carl, I've, I've got a couple questions. Sure. How, do we, how do we apply for that derelict funding? Um, basically, um, normally the derelict <coughs> boat, I'll let Mr. Pickett, yeah, the city basically applies for it. Oh, so you're, you're already getting that money then? Yeah. Okay, so we don't need to apply separately for it. We got, no, we got okay. money from fine from you guys and mm -hmm. from FWC for. I see. Yeah. Okay, and then for the waterway cleanup program, does that have y'all already 
Have you already uh, gotten your hands on that money too, or is that still? Now, I tell you, normally the way that works, it's just, it's an NGO. Like, uh, so there doesn't uh, need to, we wouldn't need to be an intermediary then. The Riverkeeper could just go straight. Yeah, to the okay, Riverkeeper so, okay. could do it. Right. Um, at one time, um, the Lighthouse actually uh, did it one year. Um, it, they they call it the Crab Trap Roundup, and the, the deal was is when the um, there's a and you guys know better than I, there's a certain period when you're not supposed to have any crab traps in the water, and they they scheduled the, that for that period, and they went out there and picked up any crab traps they could find. But, yeah, the, the river keeper would be, I think she's talked to us about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I mean, that would be a good one right there. Great. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Carl, yes, one sir. question. On that dredging, <clears throat> I think you mentioned I don't know, a couple months ago, that there might be a possibility that they'll take some of the sand from the big sandbar at the uh, north end of Salt Run. You know. yep. Yes, sir. That is part of the potential uh, borrow area. Um, um, it, it just depends on um, when they actually get in there, and, 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 and the target is the 1.3 million yards. And so they're going to concentrate on the inlet channel and that flood shoal area. And they were going to go north of the Bridge of Lions, but um, due to the size of the dredge, the guy can't get under the, the bridge. So um, the other potential borrow area is that uh, shoal there at the mouth of Salt Run, which has been dredged in the past. So, and I, I don't have. But they wouldn't take the whole thing. You know, they what? They would not take that I entire have. shoal. Well, just with your expertise at dead low tide, how many cubic? yards of sand do you think are in that salt run sandbar total yeah well i know years and years and years ago the the port district kind of on an emergency i think took about a hundred and eighty thousand cubic yards and put it right out here where old a one a curves into st augustine beach and um that took probably i don't know 30 percent 40 percent so wow. it's it's a lot the, what drives that is um the, the, when they put stuff on the beach it has to be beach quality and um that shoal the beach quality material tends to be on the north half of the shoal and then the south half would probably be more of a finer material so hopefully they'll get some of it thank you anything else <clears throat> thank you Afternoon, uh, Teddy Meyer, Parks and Rec. Just give you guys a quick update. Um, just two things: Volano parking lot um, improvements find grant from last year uh, scheduled to start in late October, early November. We're waiting on the boating season. Then we have a fishing tournament in two weeks, uh, end of September. So um, that's Doug Crane you're talking about. Yeah, uh, Volano. Oh, okay. Yeah, so restriping. Parking bollards, fencing to kind of corral the actual legitimate usage there. Um, the other one, Doug Crane, is in the final round. It's been mm, almost four rounds of comments back and forth between Army Corps and Construction Services. It was in the final round of comments back and forth on the plan as of yesterday. Because they're doing stuff with the dockage and stuff. Right, yeah, so they go back and forth with comments every time they submit more new plans and that kind of thing. So basically my goal is hopefully next meeting I can tell you we're breaking ground and when and all that stuff. So that's all I had. Unless you guys had any questions. Yes. You know, the cruisers net of St. Augustine, are you familiar with them on uh, Facebook? The cruisers. Cruisers net. There's a big group of cruisers. Can't say. Um, no. Some of them live here and keep this Facebook. Anyways, long story short. They seem to know everything the county is doing project-wise within our district that I've never even heard of. Okay. Is there some way the county could send us data on all, like, for example, what are they doing at Summerhaven? Those people at Summerhaven seem to know all kinds of stuff, and I've never heard of it. Can we find out as much as everybody else? <laughs> um, you, get, you know, a data package sent to a lease and for distribution on any county projects going on uh, within the district? Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. I, I guess the question would be which department, only because it's so diverse. So, 
multiple projects from different departments? I mean, I can obviously only speak to Parks and Rec, but between construction services, facilities maintenance, real estate, I mean, it's... That's just Would there be a liaison of some sort that uh, we could Probably reach out to? someone in the commission office um, to gather that deals that? with the agenda manager and things like that could probably help you. In the commission's office? It would be office. my thought because they would generate all the information uh, from the actual county as a whole. Okay. Um, and then however they give you the information would be that. And they could reach out and call would, whatever. They have everything that comes to them. From the entire county. So it's like so the clerk of the commissioner's office? Basically, okay. and or someone within the actual commissioner's office would probably be the best place to start, I would Okay, think. thank you. Good, thanks. Thank you. <coughs> Josh Underwood, Sheriff's Office Marine Unit. Um, just some port statistics for the Sheriff's Office. 127 calls for service this month. 19 wake zone warnings were issued in the port district. And just... Keep in mind, these are port district only statistics. Three citations were issued for no life jackets. Two were issued for navigation rule violations. Um, two were no nav lights on commercial vessels that night. And then there's two new derelict investigations we have within the port district. They're in that Doug Crane area. Um, one of them is a continuing investigation of the sunk 85 foot shrimp boat. Um, that one's still in the court process, and I can give you an update as soon as the court process on that ends, and we can try to get it out. And then that's all I have for my side, unless you guys have anything. No, Josh. You have to bring up your application. Bring up my grant again? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, because I okay. forwarded it to everybody. Okay. So just a reminder, this is the grant application that we submitted, I don't know, back in June when I initially came up um, for the Port Commission to help fund uh, two night vision goggles for the Sheriff's Office boat of Marine Unit along with handheld forward infrared thermal devices. Now I got a copy of that. That look what you what do you ask is it, I, I sent it. It was it's it's an application for assistance. Yeah, so what what else does he need to do? I thought we had already voted approval on that. No we had only a, we had voted approval on half of that, if okay. I recall, right? I we voted approval for night vision but not infrared or vice versa. I don't I don't remember what we did so <laughs> I, don't yeah. I, I honestly think it was just they haven't fully, you know, uh, voted on the both both of them okay so it was 19 16 thousand and three thousand so it comes to i think it was like 20 thousand 19 something i thought 19 six okay. or 19 seven 19 thousand seven hundred is what correct we're requesting correct so, so we're voting on that today then okay okay i make a motion that we approve that I'll second. Okay, of the amount of nineteen thousand seven hundred ten dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Is that the total amount? Okay, yes, the motion sir. is made and seconded. Is there a discussion? If not, we, all in favor, say aye. Yeah, we already aye. discussed aye. it. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> okay, so are you, are you going to get a interlocal local agreement with for the funds? I think the sheriff's office needs an interlocal agreement. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so get you an interlocal. I can do that. Okay. I'll bring it next meeting. What about Cop Jerry? Doesn't he need a set of those night vision glasses? He might, but he's not here. That's right. <laughs> tell that's tell him he needs to come in and get him some glasses. I can't speak for the city. <laughs> Josh, I got one more question for you, actually. So it's about the, the MSDs thing, which we've been going back and forth okay. on for a while. So I looked into it. I don't think that we can write a, a any kind of regulation or ordinance that would require zip ties. Uh, I haven't been able to find any other jurisdiction that's done it, and I think that the Coast Guard regs would preclude us because the Coast Guard, you know, they, you probably you're familiar with their regs. They say that there's a few different ways that you can secure it. One of them is just you know lock the door of the the head. I don't think as a as a as a special district we're allowed to supersede the Coast Guard on that. However, what I have found is a lot of evidence of, and I, I brought this up last time, jurisdictions that have. Um, Instead, they, they essentially, their regulations say that as soon as you enter their territorial waters, as soon as you're within their jurisdiction, you are submit, you are automatically um, agreeing to submit to an inspection 
that includes using a 30-day die tab. Like, that's automatic. It has to happen. You cannot, you cannot deny it. You can't turn it down. And if you do, you have to leave. You're kicked right back out again. That's not how it works here, right? We don't have anything quite that strong, do we? So we do, we have the die tabs that we get from Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. And we do random inspections. Right. Now, the, where it's tied is if they're tied to the dock at the marina, mm -hmm. you actually, they have to give you permission to come on board and use that die tab. Right. Whereas if we're underway, mm -hmm. let's say in the inner harbor, you can just pull up to that boat, drop the die tab, and check and do a, an inspection okay. of their MSD. So it, it sounds like that wouldn't change things too much if we were to adopt that sort of that all it would change would be for people who are already tied up. That would right. allow we're, we're already doing it minus the marinas is where it's right. You don't have the the e feasibility as much as you do underway. Right. And that would really be something for the marina. Like, like they could change that with their own procedures right. or regulations. And I, I don't know if the individual marinas all have their own policies about whether you know they check randomly or they don't. Right. Would that make a big difference for you if we were to? If we were to adopt an ordinance that said even if you're tied up, you have to submit to, you know, a yes, die tab being placed. I, I, I would only say on our side is I'd have to we'd have to see if we can actually do that, being that they're tied to a marina basically on private property. Mm -hmm. Well, can I comment on that? Just uh, is there no? Is I know some cities like in South Florida we have so many boats and the canals and it can be a real problem. They have they simply pass a city, city ordinance that marinas or private homeowners have to have pump outs there available, number mm -hmm. one, if you do not have the ability to pump out. Now, even if you have one that's broken three years, that you don't have one. You know, we've, we have that going on here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some of our, far, our worst offenders by far tend to be in marinas. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand if you can sign away your civil rights. Some, like I say, some cities simply say, we're going to make an ordinance that all marinas must enforce it. And, of course, how you enforce it is mm -hmm. your contract has to include, if you're going to be within the city right. limits, that consent in the contract. I'd be surprised if you weren't able to still do that on in a private marina because the water is still, those are still the waters of the United I've States. Seen them yeah, in it's still, the Clean Water Act still applies. So I'll, I'll do a little more research on that. Josh? Now, the marinas that have that clean water certification, I don't know if that's one of their standards. You know what I'm talking about? The yeah, yeah, that DP might be. issues a, mm -hmm. a clean water possible. initiative. Okay. Could you get me in touch with somebody at the SJS? Uh, you all have a legal department, I'm assuming, Correct. right? Could you put me in touch with somebody there who I could talk to you about this a little bit further? Cause and I, I spoke with the Coast Guard boarding team about the securing of it. Mm -hmm. And they do see, from, their, from Coast Guard legal, as long as they shut the door, they deemed it secure. Right. So we couldn't require them to zip it then, so. Right. That's, that's what I ran into, too. All right, well, perfect. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Any other government representatives? Uh, seeing none, we'll go down to Secretary Treasurer's report. For the city police law enforcement overtime of the 8,000 committed, we've spent 1,973. For the St. Johns County Sheriff's Department overtime of the 20,000, we have spent 11,759 to date. We're not doesn't seem like we're doing anything with the maps. Um, unspecified marine projects we haven't touched. Um, navigational repairs, 9,500 of the 10,000 that we committed. Um, regatta of lights, um, I don't know if they're having that this year, but they would have to come up either in October to request funding. But last year of the 7,000 we committed to them, uh, we paid 6277 Of the, uh, the funds available on the Florida State Board of Administration, we have 23125 In the operating account, we have $120,880. In the money market account, we have $2,284,000 approximately. Of the taxes budgeted for this fiscal year, which ends in, a, in two weeks, we budgeted 570,634. We received 565,449. We're still expecting 5,185. Um, Any questions? I do Ms. have Kemper? a question. Um, what happened to the money in the Summer Haven account balance? 
Oh, that's seven hundred dollars. That's still there. Uh, no, I thought we'd approved a ninety-two. But well, I don't. Ha I don't have it on there. We didn't. We haven't spent it. They haven't come to us, so I haven't put it on there for this because of this. So there's still ninety-two thousand dollars. No, no. I think it's because I think we spent four thousand of that prior years. So I think what's left is like eighty-six. But I have to go back and look. Okay, because it wasn't prior years. We just approved that while I was serving on this board. Yes. Yeah. That was and the only thing that I know we approved out of was a twenty-two thousand for the plants. Oh, that was that was paid out of. The we we approved that. I remember that, but yeah. that was all. So I'm just concerned. Where so where is the ninety two thousand at now? It's it's sitting in the money market account. Earning interest. okay, that's just something weird to me. If that's part of the Summer Haven balance, I'd like to see it. No, the Summer Haven balance was the actual Summer Haven monies that from the state. From the state, the ninety two thousand is from the port. Okay, but it's so not that money is in our. It's okay. still available for Summer Haven, which they All have right. not. One other, one last question I had was: uh, Do you remember back when we were expecting to get from FEMA that Summer Haven money, which was ninety-seven thousand dollars? We did never. We never got that back from FEMA, so they denied us never to get it. Okay, thank you. Um, the other thing is, as um, I <coughs> sent everybody a copy of the. Uh, contract for the um, accounting services and secretarial services. So you each should have a copy of that. So if you can vote on that today, also. I thought they were going to. That's different than the auditor that's going to come talk to us. Oh, that's yeah. This has nothing to do with the auditor. This is our firm. This is Jones CPA okay. and Associates. I just got that contract very recently. Well, we se I sent it. Prior, but then it, he had to revise it. The okay, the that's what I'm saying. That last I one, have I, one if you want to look at it. I have it here. I haven't had time to totally renew it because the last, the updated one just came in. And um, okay, so I could bring it up at the next meeting if you'd like. I have, yeah, right. I did get it. I just haven't had time because okay. the minutes of the meeting just came in yesterday too. So all right, so okay. I will bring it up at the next meeting. Okay. Um. Thank you. Um, we need a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, if you look at the minutes, if you have a copy of them, uh, there's only one correction that I believe needs to be made. On the first page, the bottom line, Lieutenant Steve Zakowski, FWC, reported there were no boating accidents and only one BUI. What is that? BUI. Boating under the influence. Boating under the influence. Boating under the influence. Drunk boating. Oh, boating. Okay, okay, gotcha. I thought that was a, should have been a DUI. It is. It's yeah. the same thing. It's the yeah. same thing, okay. but yeah. you're, you're on a boat. Yep. All right, can I have a motion to approve the minutes? I move to approve. I'll second it. All right, motions were made and seconded. Is there any discussion? I could not approve the minutes because it did not include all the discu discussion and conversation about the chairman gaveling me so that I could not issue my report on the ethics letter. It does not include any of that. That was said and done. So I'd just say I'd vote no not to approve it. Well, if it happened, it needs to be in there. The minutes are not correct. Okay, are you proposing a change to the minutes? Just I said if you would go back and put in everything that was basically, doesn't have to be verbatim, but you know, you, the chairman, gaveled me down so I could not issue a report that was on the uh, agenda. And then I see you put it on the agenda today, but I didn't ask you to put it on there today. I didn't come prepared to just speak about an ethics discussion that I came prepared last month to speak at, and I was gaveled down. I've already written the letter, and it's being edited. So why, my question is, why did, so, who put it on this agenda? I did because I because it was passed and I thought you'd want to bring it up this this month. Okay, that's the only reason I said I didn't approve the agenda because I didn't ask for that. I didn't put the kayak ramp up for a vote. Um, there's several things on here with my name that I simply didn't ask to be put on here. That's all. Is there any more discussion on the on the minutes? We have a motion to pass and a second. And all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Okay. Motion passes. Okay, uh, the engineering report is going to be delayed. I believe the president of Taylor Marine is coming. Taylor Engineering. Hey, T Taylor Engineering is coming. Mr. Craig okay. is out due to surgery. 
Right. So that is why he won't be attending probably <coughs> next month either. So Mr. Uh, his name is Jason Marino, and he will, I think it's Jason Marino, he is the president of Taylor Engineering, and he will be here at the October meeting. Okay. And also, for your request, the auditor will, will be, be here, here next at month. the, at okay. the October meeting, yes. Did we get an updated contract from Taylor yet, or are we going to have that before the no, next? No, he's going to, the president will bring that with him. Okay, well, are you going to get us the contract? Oh, yeah, I okay. will. Okay, we'll will get that before that the next meeting. Sure. Okay, okay we have, uh, <clears throat> as you know, at the end of the last meeting, we announced that our attorney was going to be retiring. Uh, we put out some advertisements, some announcements, so we have, I know, some attorneys present today who are going to allow to speak to us for five minutes apiece. And we'll do that now. Uh, <clears throat> so whichever one of you wants to come up first, five minutes, we're going to time you. Somebody's got to jump up. I don't know. Um, good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Clay Meek. Um, I've submitted the response to the request for proposals. I tried to be rather uh, thorough in that, and I know as much as lawyers love to hear themselves speak, I know most people don't like to hear the lawyers speak. So I'm not going to regurgitate everything that I've put in that proposal. I did want to mention uh, three additional things that were not in there that given some of what I've observed here today and just some other thoughts that came to me I thought might be of interest to the Commission. Um, first of all, obviously, this commission works very closely with law enforcement. Um, I, I promise I'll be done in less than five minutes. Clock or no clock. Oh. Um, my sister-in-law is actually law enforcement office with the city of Daytona Beach. Um, certainly, I, I have a familiarity with what law enforcement goes through, with what law enforcement deals with, and their interactions with governmental entities. I think uh, given the involvement that this commission has with various law enforcement agencies, that would be an additional benefit uh, to the commission. Um, uh, secondly, I, I know I'm from the Daytona Beach area. Um, I think it uniquely qualifies me for this particular position because I'm not from St. Augustine. I don't have significant business ties to St. Augustine or anyone currently within St. Augustine. But I am just across the county line, just south of Flagler, so I am close. Um, I can be here. Obviously, I am here. Um, and I know the commissioners have seen me here listening to the presentation here today. I think that makes me, it gives me the benefit of being close enough to be responsive to whatever the commission may need, but also gives me the benefit of having an, an arm's length distance so that I'm not going to become entangled with any um, attorney-client relationships that might already be formed in this area. Beyond that, I know the question might come up as to why this particular district. Um, I feel relatively confident that I'm going to be the only attorney, either in writing or verbally here today, to be able to say, this actual governmental entity has some sentimental value to me. I proposed to my wife within this district. Um, on the dockage between the, the main city marina, the restaurant right there, is where I proposed to her. And without a doubt, that's been uh, one of the best decisions in my life. And so this district, St. Augustine itself, but even within this um, waterway district, has always been a, a special place for me. Um, also, just so the district knows, this is not just a legal issue for me. I am the president of the Lewis County Bar Association. One of the efforts that I undertook upon becoming president this year before the request for proposals was ever sent out is um, organizing a participation in the International Waterway Cleanup Day. Um, it's actually more than one day, but Volusia County's Day, and you're all welcome to come down and join us. I'd love to have more people, is uh, going to be on Saturday. Uh, we will be participating. Uh, currently have a dozen lawyers, family members. Um, it's... Waterways are important above and beyond being a, an attorney. Beyond that, I would say, again, my proposal, I think, sets forth all the information I would expect the commission to need. I am certainly 
uh, flexible on the monthly retainer aspect versus the hourly rate for uh, services beyond the normal monthly amounts to the extent the commission would be interested in discussing well we'd like to build in five or ten extra hours each month because we think that's what we're going to need I'm, I'm happy to discuss that and work out something and beyond that with my time remaining I would love to field any questions that any commissioner may have about me or anything in my proposal um, I have a question mr. Yes, ma'am can you practice in federal court as well I am currently not licensed in federal court okay. I've been before the 11th Circuit um, undefeated there in a very limited capacity and I'm also previously was a member of the middle northern and southern districts within the state of Florida that is not something I, I maintained just because okay. I, I can only do so much and that was not a big aspect of my practice okay um, you, and so you are the president of the Volusia County Bar Association Volusia County Bar Association okay. yes ma'am what kind of things do they do just out of curiosity there is that an oversight um, we are a membership of the lawyers in Volusia County that choose to be a part we are a voluntary okay. bar organization essentially we are the county level of what would be the state of Florida Bar Association okay. uh, we are voluntary you do not have to be a member um, and you're in private practice yes right now. okay um, among the things we do with the Bar Association is we have sponsored um, judicial reviews coming up on elections to try to give voters something more tangible than just that's a great judge or that's a bad judge um, we try as much as possible and I assure you this will be one of our bigger years to do community service uh, get involved in the community we have um, when I first joined the board one of the things I started was Habitat for Humanity joint builds and the Bar Association went out and participated with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we've also interacted with joint projects with the Volusia County Medical Society because I felt it was important to get the organizations together and see that we are human beings, not just professionals sitting in ivory towers. All right. Thank you very much. Thank We're you going all. to have to adhere to the to the five minute rule for everybody because we have a tax hearing at five o'clock and we've got other business. Thank yes, you very much. Thank you all the commissioners. I appreciate it. Uh, and the other uh, applicants, remember that questions will be included in that five minute. So if you want to start a little early, if you want to have questions, okay. Next. Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is David Naples. This is my law partner, Jack Spence. Good afternoon. With, with Naples and Spence. Excuse me, can you say your name again? Yes, David Naples. And Jack okay. Spence, Naples okay. and Spence Law. Sorry, I don't know if you need us to get closer to this or not, but uh, Jack and I have been practicing together here in St. John's County for about 10 years. Uh, we just started our firm about three years ago now, um, and we're pretty quickly growing. Um, you know the benefit that we're seeking um, out of oh, sorry what we're seeking out of um, working with the Commission like yours we do have uh, both you kind of get the benefit of having two attorneys we also have a support staff we have two full-time people uh, and a one part-time person right now so uh, we do have an office here in st. Augustine so we are local and all of our practice for the most part has been in in st. John's County uh, we have, I think we put it on our proposal. Uh, Jack and I have have a lot of community service here. We've gotten multiple awards for our pro bono service. Uh, we also represent a lot of uh, charities. Uh, so Jack is on the board of one of the charities. Uh, we also represent some of the charities with regards to legal issues. So we're familiar with working with board members and, and committees and trying to work uh, out issues. Um, our practice generally is pretty uh, uh, is pretty general practice. So we do practice estate planning, civil litigation. We are barred in the middle district for the Jacksonville you are. office. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we do civil litigation, personal injury, family law, intellectual property, um, and really what we're seeking is an opportunity to work closely with the commissioners um, and, and learn a little bit more about what you all do and how we can step in and help so um, want to add everyone hear me okay uh, just a couple brief points to, to add to that 
Uh, I'm a member of the COC board here in, in St. John's County that's committed to uh, fighting homelessness. So as a board member, I fill the attorney seat there, so I'm very familiar with the inner workings of how a board works, policies, procedures, that sort of thing. Uh, and to kind of piggyback on what Dave said, if, if you decided to work with us, the advantage is you're hiring a law firm, you're not hiring an individual, uh, we're, we're both licensed attorneys here in the state of Florida and in the federal court, and we have a full support staff. So between the two of us, it's a lot easier to make commitments work than when you have just one person, I've found. Uh, other than that, I, I think if you asked around uh, our colleagues, we have a pretty good reputation. I've been working here in the St. Augustine area for almost 10 years now as an attorney, so we know the judges well, we know our colleagues well, we feel we're pretty easy to work with, and uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions anyone may have. Okay. Have you guys ever come across, not that there's been a lot of this in this county, um, doing any type of lawsuits around dredging problems or issues, anything like that? Uh, can't, can't say that I have, Commissioner, no. 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 And tell you, as far as civil court, we're there probably every week, whether it's a county court or a circuit civil issue. Uh, but now, now everything's virtual, but uh, before that, we were in the courthouse probably at least once a week. Gotcha, gotcha. Jack, and you guys are located, are you in St. Augustine? Or we're we're in off of State Road 16. Okay. okay. Jack has a lot of experience in what, as well in um, state court appellate issues, so he actually has some published opinions hmm. as well. So... Um, as Jack said, for civil, for civil law, we're in court often. We, we do handle a lot of lawsuits. We're very familiar with the court system here, uh, and we have handled cases in the federal district court as well. Are you familiar <clears throat> with the government and the sunshine laws? We've done some sunshine law on the other side, so normally we're requesting records on behalf of people. So Jack, I think, has probably got more yeah. familiarity with that than I do. So. We, we, we've done a number of uh, records requests for clients of ours trying to get information. So we're, we're familiar with the process and kind of, if you know how it works on one side, you know how it works on the other side. So that's, that's something we understand. Law attorneys also often have to uh, write resolutions. Of course. Uh, sometimes, you know, in conjunction with the county or with the city. So you can handle things like that. Absolutely. We've written many contracts, and that's, in essence, just a, basically the equivalent of a, of a contract. So it's just a matter of writing a form, making sure I's are dotted, T's are crossed, proper parties are signing. We've worked with the county before on other types of issues, ordinance violations and things of that nature, and so we're often presented with similar type resolutions, what they call memorandum of understanding. So we're pretty familiar with kind of what they're what their system looks like and assuming that it's going to be pretty familiar with um, other districts uh, and other committees. So. That's good. Yes, that's all. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Commission. Before you, before you start, um, I think what, rather than take up a lot of time, you know, asking a lot of questions this time, we can, if something comes up, we've got the information. We've got to know how to contact them. <clears throat> so in the next, between now and the next meeting, we may be wanting to contact you on the personal telephone call to ask you questions. <clears throat> but that's directed to all of you. Okay. Yeah, good afternoon. My name is John Wallace. I'm an attorney with Smith, Halsey, and Busey in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, Appreciate you all having me here this afternoon. I, uh, in lieu of telling you a lot about myself, I'll rely on my submission. The one uh, item I will will tell you is, uh, like the first gentleman that spoke, I do have uh, somewhat of a sentimental, sentimental tie to the dredging district. I grew up um, in Jacksonville. My f grandfather was the president of the Florida School for the Deaf, and so I uh, grew up spending a lot of time at his house on Oglethorpe Boulevard just down the road here. Um, learned how to water ski and salt run. Um, learned, caught my first fish down in Devil, Devil's Elbow. So I've um, got a lot of familiarity with the district, uh, but more importantly, I've got a lot of familiarity representing boards uh, such as yourself. Self. I've represented a number of cities, a number of counties, including St. John's County in litigation. I've uh, handled uh, the defense of uh, dredge and fill permits in federal court in the middle district, and uh, I have challenged and defended dock permits in, uh, before the Division of Administrative Hearings. Um, 
and I've also um, defended clients that have been uh, uh, issued notices of violation relating to issues such as derelict vessels and um, failing docks. So I feel like I've got a pretty unique perspective on the work that you all do, and uh, be happy to an answer any questions for you. Is John Wallace, is that your name? Yes, ma'am. Oh, Mr. Wallace, um, you practice in federal court. You've done some dredging experience. On July 8th of last year, we decided to file a claim against our own contractors for problems we had with the dredging project in Summerhaven. Is that something you'd be able to move forward with? Yes, I, we'd be able to. We'd be able to move forward with that. We're actually my firm right now is representing a. Uh, is it's kind of on the opposite side of that type of case, representing a, a dredging contractor against a dredging district right now. Uh, these contractors, our contractors would, would include Turnbull, Engineer, Turnbull Environmental and uh, Taylor Engineering. Would you be able to move forward with that? I'd have to run a conflicts check my firm. I'm unaware of representing either of those entities. Because um, I, okay. Just a minute, Commissioner Flowers, let's let the gentleman finish his presentation first. Uh, he did, I'm he asked finished. For, I'm, he I'm, asked just, I'm just here to answer any questions that you all have. He asked Go for ahead. questions. So. He asked for questions, and I'm done. The same question that I asked the other ones about the resolutions. Yes, I've drafted resolutions and ordinances. I've drafted uh, tax uh, budgetary resolutions, budgetary ordinances, uh, both in the context specifically related to um, setting millage and setting budgets for special districts, uh, as well as for land use uh, amendments, uh, amendments to comprehensive plans, rezonings, things of that nature. Okay, one of the first things I want to, to do after we have the new board elected, we've got uh, possibly, you know, one or two new commissioners coming on, <clears throat> is to have a, our attorney give a presentation to us on government in the sunshine. Yes, that's something I could do. I've done that before for the Ponte Vedra Municipal Services District uh, and for several other um, special districts. Okay. Um, just I can provide you uh, with references if, if you'd like for for uh, persons on those boards that I've done so far, as well as for um, municipalities and, and counties that I've represented in litigation. More questions? You've thank got you. Thank another you. Another minute to talk if you want to. Uh, no, I, I just encourage you all to review my um, review the submission we put forth, and uh, like I said, I'd be happy to put you in touch with um, both city attorneys that I've worked with as outside counsel, as well as with uh, persons on boards that I've represented in the capacity as assistant general counsel. And as far as I know, it is it, our attorney's not here right now, but I believe we, as he just mentioned, we can call any attorney that's spoken here direct to ask them with questions. Between these next you, you could individually, you could not discuss I mean, that amongst yourselves. We can individually call, call yes, you guys correct. individually if we have a, other questions. Right, you could okay. not discuss that amongst yourselves. Right, okay. No. Yeah, no, I'm just checking to make sure I can call him later. Or any of these guys, actually. And we know not to talk to each other when we're out of here. <laughs> oh, well, to say hi. <laughs> okay, anything else? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more attorneys? All right, moving on the agenda. Discuss letter to ethics committee. I don't think we're going to really do that today, are we? I said I tried that last time and I've already okay, moved on. Okay, the only thing that I want to say, I know um, uh, we asked you, Commissioner Flowers, for a letter to look over. I'm, I'm not done with it, as I advised. And anyway, when you, I'm done, I will certainly. Send you indicated it to you. in a in an email to Elise, which was distributed to all of us, that you would just write your own letter. But let me say that none of us have the right to write to anything unless in the name of the port. I've not Beach done that, sir, and you know it. Which is why I was here last month trying to discuss it with the port and trying to make a motion so that the, if the port was interested in doing it direct, I was given a big folder, and in that folder, it told me, I see this kind of stuff going on, I have to report it. There's a, in that folder is also a form to report it to the Ethics Commission. Every commissioner gets that. 
if I send it to you and you don't, the commission does not to want to follow up on an unethical act, I have every right, a clear right and a duty to follow up myself. I tried to come in here and talk to you about it. I have no intention of writing a letter for this port. It will be from me. Any citizen can write a letter yes. to the Ethics Commission. And I am a yes, citizen. Okay. I will not be writing it on behalf of this you port. write a letter. And I personal, will. A personal letter, but not in the name of the port. I never said I would. And That's why I was here. And you gaveled me, so you didn't want to hear me. You didn't want my motion to ask the port to send it as a cohesive unit. Fine. I sent it myself. So what are we talking about? You already gaveled that out of me. Next item on the agenda, discussion regarding conveyance of lot. Um, Commissioner Flowers? Yes, I, you, everybody got that by the email? Okay, that's just for the yes. public. One of, our, one of our constituents on Volano Beach is speaking for some citizen there who has a deed to pub, private property, but it's being used publicly. I sent you a copy of it, and it should also include a picture. And their question is, would the port be willing to take over deed to that since it's literally a part of the beach at this point? Okay. <clears throat> when I got the, uh, I did receive the, the, the copy of the letter, and I had a conversation with uh, the party that you talked about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, since I live in that same subdivision, uh, there are several things about that. Now, the owner of that lot did not ask if anybody could take it over. It's on the beach, and you can't build on it. Um, so <clears throat> his thought was perhaps a governmental agency <clears throat> would like to take it over. But it's still in the Porpoise Point subdivision. And then if, let's say, we did take it over, we would still then have to pay the dues, the which are roughly $45 oh, a month. For the subdivision? Hmm? For the like the HOA, it's hard for me to understand you. That the mess. HOA for the subdivision yes. you're yeah, talking that, about. That's right. Homeowners. Okay, okay, I can't. The know. dues that you're talking about. You're talking about HOA dues. Yes. Okay. Okay. So anyway, that <clears throat> may be a moot point <clears throat> because it's an interesting concept. Because the I explained to him that the port does own properties, but um, we don't have to pay the, the dues. I asked him also if the owners of that particular beach lot, not beachfront, but it's actually on the beach, if they are paying the dues, and he said that they do pay the dues every year. So the lot may not even be available. So I guess what he's going to, I guess he's going to expect me to call him back and say, is this something the port does? Do we do this or not? Or... Um, are we going to vote on it, or are you saying it's not available because we'd have to pay the $40 a month dues? Why can't we ask the HOA, since this is literally a non-buildable, you know, it's, again, it's become public property, literally, to just let that go if the port was willing to take it, take deed to it? Can I, Mr. Chairman, can I say something about this lot? Yes. The, the, now, the... Ariel, that I saw, the lot is underwater. Do you use your mic. Oh, it's, uh, here. Yeah. Right. The lot's underwater. I don't know if it's ever out of the water. My the picture might have been taken at high tide, but it's, it is part of the subdivision. Uh, and, and it's surrounded by, uh, on, by road right-of-way and private lots on the other side. And, and there's about a dozen lots in there that are underwater or part of the beach. I think his complaint too, sir, was that, um, in other words, kind of there, it's it's in the water. It's available for public use, except for they end up they still and it's not buildable. They can't do anything, but they still have the liability. Yeah, well, and I think that's why we take, were trying to turn it into public. That's property. a good question because if the port takes ownership, the port has liability. Well, sure, sure they do, but it's public property, and we, you know, it it's still not public becomes property public property right now. It's it's inundated. It's so uh, I, I don't see any. I understand benefit. it's private property right now, but once a pub, once the port owns something or the city owns something, it may be owned by the city, but it becomes public property because the public owns the city. Is what I'm saying. What it, it may be non-taxable. That's what you mean. Well, I'm just saying well, maybe we could work out something, especially if there is lot after lot that's going on over there, and it's all. In, are they planning something maybe to build that beach up so it won't be underwater? No, Nothing? it's getting dredged right now. That's right, right next to the federal channel. What, we, what would we do with this lot? 
It would just be, I, I don't think you can do anything with it. It literally would be because it's, it's a private hazard for them. And it would be, a, could, be a hazard for the for the. I don't know what to, you could do with it. Yeah. Just well, we own all that, you know, to the south of the inlet. If somebody gets hurt out there, I guess, you know, it's still, our, most people think of it a public beach, but we, the port owns that. Well, we have plenty of insurance for that. Well. And that's the south jetty you're talking about? All south of that, yeah, all the way over to Anastasia. It's quite a bit. The, the person that you talked to is actually an attorney in Jacksonville, and he brought up the fact that the liability, <clears throat> if somebody stumbled over a rock, or something falls out, we own it, and they're going to come to us. Right. So uh, it's really better if it stays in a private ownership. <clears throat> anyway, I, any further discussion on that? Uh, let's go down to the item I added, D. Uh, you know, we didn't make it. Nobody made a motion. You just decided for the whole board. Don't you think we should vote? Uh, wait, what are you, what are I'm, you just, I'm saying you just decided it would stay be better to stay private. But we did. We have. You don't get to make that decision. The board makes a decision. I mean, I can make a motion like now that oh, we I'm vote. I'm sorry. I'm that, well, that's really it. important that one I person doesn't decide Mr. everything. For the purpose of making a motion. Let's just okay. Let's at least do it legally. I'd like to make a motion. That we look into this legally about taking over the. Um, Wait, I'm sorry. Slides. You know, if you could just move that so I could see your mouth. I'd like to make a motion that we consider taking over these lots. One lot. There's been a motion made. Is there a second? Hearing none, the motion dies for lack of a second. Thank you very much. Let's go on down to item D. This is uh, concerning membership in the uh, Florida Association of Special Districts. Um, it's not very much a year. Uh, <clears throat> at least about how much are our dues? 150. <clears throat> okay, well worth it. <clears throat> a year or two ago, I went to one of their state meetings to, to learn more about it, and uh, it was well worth my time. They have lobbyists, too. If we have any issues that come up that we need to... Uh, get to a legislator in, in Tallahassee, we can use their lobbyists, <clears throat> as long as we're a member. Um, okay, could, <clears throat> could I have a motion to uh, renew our membership in the FASD? I'll make a motion to do that. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. <clears throat> Pass these over to the lease. I got <clears throat> okay, um, we're down to old business discussion update on vote to May Street boat ramp for kayak launch. Commissioner Flowers. Again, I did not ask this to be put on the agenda, although I can say, um, as we last time we talked about this last meeting, Mr. Brown wanted to just have a discussion directly with the two preliminary uh, contractors over the cement pad and the, the repaving. They are both working, so I wasn't able to bring them in here, so I didn't put it on the agenda. No, I just, because it wasn't... It wasn't, so, was, right. I just wasn't able to, if I had been able to get them to come speak. However, I have found out some more information. Well, then just, we'll just take that off today, and then... Right. <coughs> well, I, I would like to go ahead and answer Mr. Brown's questions, since it's on the agenda from last uh, month. His question was he wanted to know how the work of these fellow, these contracts would, would, would be uh, inspected. And when I did ask them, even though they couldn't come today because they were working, um, for example, the fellow that does the concrete, that's a big easement from the FDOT. So he'd be getting a permit for sure. Mm -hmm. And they would be just, they would be inspecting that when it was done, just like any other permit. And on the other part, anything that we present, it's my understanding, we present this to the um, Mr. Bertram's office, and every two weeks they would do a public works review of everything. Mm -hmm. But if in, in, in the process of paving that road or repairing it, if it comes to the level of it needs a permit, again, the, it would be the same thing as when I do my driveway at home, it would be permitted and inspected by the city. I, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know exactly which one. But Did you see Mr. Piggott's email, though, that, yes. that said that there were probably going to be a host of other issues that the city had identified, you know, possible. That was to come out, as my understanding, those issues would come out when we presented our drawing to the city. I see. Okay. Dave, can you can you com comment on that, please? Can I sure. David Bircham, I'm the Planning and Building Director for the City of St. Augustine. I hope when I spoke to you briefly about this some months ago, I didn't oversimplify things. 
this would be a complex project. In other That's words, okay. if the district wants to construct, manage, constructing, sir. maintain, ensure a public boat ramp on DOT property, or in some way obtain a controlling interest on DOT property through purchasing it or a leasehold agreement or similar instrument, that would be the first step. We've already done that, sir. I've been with, with DOT. With DOT then the design would come through a review. We've already done that. We've already negotiated Then the that design would go before our planning and zoning board because it's in a conservation overlay zone. And then the permitting would begin. So if you're talking to concrete contractors now, that may be a little premature. We've already, again, would you look at me when I'm talking to you? Excuse me, just a minute. I believe yes, I can yes, ask him a, a question. Let's let him finish. Okay, finish, please, please sir. But and I have a question speak, about the FOT. I thought he was finished. Go ahead, sir. Finish. Well. Because you did, unfortunately. I was in your office, and you unfortunately you made this thing very simple a few months ago. And all of a sudden, nobody wants this to happen. We are not constructing. We are repairing. No, no. And I have spent... I have spent two hours at a table full of engineers with the FDOT. We already have a list from them of exactly what they want us to do. The easement is not a problem, and it's been taken okay. care of. So please, just refer to us what the city needs us to do. We're not constructing anything new. We're repairing. Well, ma'am, I don't know what you're doing because I haven't seen your design yet. Well, frankly. I did come into your office and discuss this with you quite thoroughly, and I came back here and told me. So now... Leaving the FDOT out of it because you are the city and we've been to the FDOT. Been working on this a year. And that was a long meeting I had with them. We know exactly what they need us to do and it's as simple as pie. So tell us, we need to go through planning and zoning? Because you didn't tell me that. You told me it was going to be a public works review. Well, public works will review. They'll be one of the folks well, that will planning and zoning is, is for something that's being constructed new or being repaired. Because this is already a boat ramp. Okay. It's just been a... Wait, Miss Flowers, look, I'm sorry, I didn't say anything. Well, Don't you gavel me again. A, number one. Don't you we, gavel me we, again. I'm asking him a question. We have never had a motion on the floor to approve this. This discussion No, but is, we are discussing it, and somebody put it on a thing, so we are hearing them. Don't you... Don't get to stop in the middle of a discussion. Let the man finish. Now you're telling us we need to take it to planning and zoning, even though we're not building anything new. Is that correct? Uh, Ma'am, again, I don't know what you intend to build. We well, then you must about, have forgot when I came down to your office and talked to well, you Well, what day. you told me, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, it was a parking lot and a kayak launch or boat ramp. It was repairing the launch know, that was already there is what I discussed with you. As far as I know, there was an engine path down to the water. And, maybe a light. and there, none of that exists right now as far as I know. You don't, you please go over to May Street because for some reason the city's decided we're not going to do this wonderful improvement that cost almost no money. No, I didn't and you have that. no problem until somebody put this bug in your ear. Don't you dare gavel me. No, 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 ma'am. After okay. planning and zoning, where do you suggest that we go? Just so we can know, because it's a year to repair a muddy, dirty, cracked up kayak ranch that's been a boat launch for a hundred years. It's nothing new. Okay. Now, don't Robert, you cry. I'm not. No, no, don't you dare. Do don't you do it. Told me you do not. I'm talking order. to this man you're out of serious business. You're out of order. I am not. You're out of order. Mr. You're being Brocher. rude to someone who's coming to talk to out us. Out of planning and zoning. Number out one. Out of planning and zoning. What do Number one. You're doing the same thing you did to me when I tried Wait, to talk I, about that. I you have. You choose what commissioners talk about. Turn. <laughs> we have. What do we do after the planning and zoning, Mr. Burton? Over and over and over again. Miss Flowers is the only person, I think, on this board that really has been pushing this. I've been dead set against it because I passed by there yesterday. Those of you who were anywhere near the river yesterday saw how high the tide got. It was coming over into my backyard, actually, and I filmed that and put it on Facebook. That area was out, was, was too low. My other argument is it's used already. People use it and it's costing us a penny. They know when the tide is going to be high, so they don't go park down there. But there are days <clears throat> when people go down there and use that, and I certainly don't see the reason this board should take on the extra expense. That's your personal that. opinion. Once again, you do not decide. Hey, I, Mr. Brown, are you I, not at all interested in learning okay. about the... Co Commissioner but, Flowers, if you want to... Could you speak to this board? If you want us to continue talking about, about this, then make a motion for us to approve it, and we'll either vote it up or down. 
I didn't put the discussion on the agenda. Y'all did. You're supposed to have a motion before you discuss. That's I did not. Right. They're right there on the agenda. Discuss regarding, where is it here? Kayak launch. Discussion, update, and vote. I didn't put any of that. Y'all did. But if you want to discuss it, let's discuss it. But I don't know why. Again, I went to the city. I made an okay, appointment. The, the correct. Again, I can't finish a sentence with you, can I? So the people don't get represented because they voted 60, almost over 60 percent represented me to do just this. If they elected me to do just this, you won't let me finish talking. Okay, okay, no, no, after no, no, the planning no. and zoning, can you tell me now in front of God and everybody, then what do we do with the city? Well, I'm not invoking God. But I will say that the development review process for a boat ramp would be the same process as any kind of commercial or institutional development. Even if the boat ramp already exists? I, I don't know if the boat ramp formally exists. Well, that's what we're actually just, discussing, like define the word is. So we're, just, we're not I'm sorry, but we're, you the, asked the, me the what control the here is, was. it doesn't exist. The current nasty now, old If you will not allow me to answer your exist. question, then I will sit down. I didn't come here to disrupt your proceedings. Well, I was I in your office and you wasted my time, a year of my time, to come back and tell me now this is a complicated process? No. And I tell don't. me that I'm building a band new rope, that literally the ramp is in the water down there? How can it be new when the actual concrete launch ramp is still there? There's no boat ramp there. <clears throat> That's a boat ramp. It's been used as a boat ramp for a long time. It's just been let go. I don't expect you to approve it. I'm working for the people who elected me. Okay. Is there a motion? <coughs> Seeing no motion, I, I appreciate you coming before us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. <clears throat> um, Follow up with Commissioner Brown on zip ties. I think we've already covered that. Yep. Um, public comment, five minutes per individual. Seeing none, we'll go down to comments by commissioners. Commissioner Way. I don't have any comments. Commissioner Flowers. No comment. Commissioner Brown. None for me, thanks. Okay, I only have one comment to make. It doesn't really have anything to do with this board. <clears throat> but our country is in a real mess <clears throat> right now from California to Chicago to New York City. So there's been <clears throat> a call from March, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm, I've got trouble with my throat. September the 26th, they're having a <clears throat> national day of prayer in Washington, D.C. Locally, we'll be doing the same thing. That's the reason I had the meeting with Beverly Slough chairman of the school board. <clears throat> there'll be a meeting, uh, there'll be a, uh, a day of <clears throat> prayer from noon to 2 p.m. in the plaza downtown, and everybody's invited to pray for our country. That's all I have. See, no further business, the meeting is adjourned. <coughs> the next meeting, by the way, is October the 20th. The ne yes, the regular meeting is October the 20th, 20th. but the next meeting for the final public hearing is October 1st, which is a Thursday at 5.05. Oh. So we're not doing anything today at 5.05? Huh? So we're not doing anything today at 5.05? Yes, yes, yes. This is the first public hearing okay. at 5.05, and then October 1st is the final public hearing. Okay. And then the next regular meeting is October 20th. Recording excerpted.